Hi, my name is Zeke. I'm KJ7NLL. I would like to give a thank you to Victoria and Lloyd for helping me with my student license, and also to Mark Vaughn for commenting on my video with helpful hints. We are building a phased array antenna. It's octagonal and it's going to look something like this. This is the top view. And it's going to be built for 144 to 148 megahertz. And it's going to have eight antennas with eight amplifiers, one amplifier per antenna. We will also use this amplifier to power a helical antenna that will talk to the uh, International Space Station. Now I'm going to show you how to make an amplifier for the FET, a FET amplifier. It's an amplifier made out of a FET. We're going to have to get a matching circuit to match the FET to 50 ohms for it to work, unless it'll have bad SWR to the antenna. So first we have to fix the S11dB, which is reflection, which, and if we fix that, which it means let's loss the antenna. For the S21 amplification, we're going to need as much gain as possible for the uh, phase shifters. We are assuming 3 dB loss per phase shifter, so we will always have 3 dB loss, and 9 dB loss is really lossy. Most amplification power comes from the voltage drain source. We want 100 watts. For the S21 amplification, we're going to need as much gain as possible for the voltage gate, gate source controls how much gain is coming out the antenna. The voltage drain source, though, is what we really care about. That's where most of the gain comes from. And eight antennas with one amplifier per antenna. We're going to get the power from the old server power supplies, these big things. They are the big server power supplies that used to power um, the server, but they can supply 1600 watts and 12 volts. We will need 800 watts because that's how much is coming through all the antennas out the uh, antennas because they're added gain and we want 100 watts, so 100 times 8 is 800. But what we really care about is the 12 volts. The 12 volts will power the voltage drain source, VDS. We will need 80 amps and it supplies 138 amps of current. That's what it can handle. We need a pre-amplifier because of the loss in the phase shifters. The switches can handle one watt through them, so we need the preamp so that there's enough at the end that we can actually use for the big amplifier FET. The bias T provides voltage gate source and voltage drain source. It keeps AC out of the power supply but allows DC to go through to the voltage gate source and voltage drain source bias the FET. A bias T is simple. An inductor stops the AC but allows the DC to pass through to the voltage gate source and the voltage drain source. Now all we need to do is design the model in Microwave Office. Let's get building! Okay, so I have Microwave Office open. And first we're going to need the, to download the FETs into Microwave Office. You can download these FETs from NXP's website into, and make sure you get the Microwave Office one. First we need the FETs. So you go to Project, Process Library, Add Remove Library, then we'll go to Add, 
and then either one, click OK, then do the same for the other. Okay, now that I've got that done, we can hit OK. Now let's create a new schematic. I click on circuit schematics, the schematic, call this schematic one, create. Okay, now we'll do control L and type AFT and we'll start with the 70 watt here. Here we have the 70 watt amplifier. We're go first we're going to connect the D to the D, that's the drain, and the G to the G, that's the gate. Now we're going to add matching components. We will need co inductors and capacitors. So do control L, C A P. There we go, closed form. And we'll just put this right here. Now we add an inductor, L, I and D. And we'll put this right beside the capacitor, like this. This one will be grounded, the inductor. And now we'll add a port, right here. The capacitor will connect here, and we'll do the same for the, the drain. You can copy paste these, then sh control right click and put it right here and drag it off. There. Now we are going to, and that's port two, which is good. Now we're going to make some bias keys. To make the bias keys, we're going to need to add components for that. So we will add, add uh, do control L, cap. Put it right here. Do control L, add it in I and D. Put that right there. Now we'll do control G for ground. And we will add a DCVS. Well, first let's get this done. So let, we will put the wire right there. And then add a DCVS. Then we can copy paste it to the other one. This will right click into position like that, and then we'll just put it right there. We will now highlight all this. Control C, Control Z, move your mouse, hold down Shift when it makes that dotted line, and click. We'll have to delete this wire. And then we'll have to ground the DC voltage sources. So now we can add some graphs. Oh, but before we add graphs, we're going to set our frequencies. So we're doing 144. Or to 148 megahertz, so Alt O, P, project options. Then we'll make this gig megahertz. This changes to megahertz. Then type 144 and 148. These can be in any numbers you want for any frequency that you're tuning it for. 
This number is the step size. We're going to do 0.1 megahertz and hit apply, 41 points. Now, if I do three here, um, it'll only do three points. But if I do 0 0.001, it will do 4,001 points. It takes the it takes longer to do the simulations the more digits you get. So we're going to do point one so that they're nice and fast. Okay. But circuit simulations are usually pretty fat, pretty fast, so they don't really need all that much. So now we will ground the fetch, control G. And now it's time to add graphs. Right click on graphs, new graph, graph one, create. Now we're going to right click, add new measurement, S11 DB, okay. Right click, add new measurement, S21 DB, okay. Now we're going to do S8. These are not very good numbers and it will get some errors, but it's complaining about something, but those don't matter. Just hit the double X. Now, as you'll see, we're getting total reflection and everything's reflecting the radio and we're getting negative 200 amplification. We're actually decreasing the amplification. So, the problem is, these are all set to one. So let's do optimize. Project, optimize goals, and optimize goal. We're going to make this the one one. It's going to be less than negative 34. 34 is 1.05, S negative 34 is 1.05 D uh, SWR, so pretty good. An infinite amount would be one to one, which is uh, which would be is impossible. At optimizer goal, greater than twenty. Okay. Now we're going to select the variables for optimization, which are the capacitor and uh, all the capacitors sort by ID by clicking on ID and all the inductors. Now we will make constraints for them all. We can use the keyboard here. So we're going to optimize the matching components. Which are these. The matching components, else, will be to 1,000. Okay, now, or this, this does not to be constrained, but it doesn't matter, and these are going to be zero to a thousand. Now we're going to make these values for the not optimized ones and the inductor is going to be one five zero zero fifteen hundred nanohenmoles. This will be 1E7, a 1 with seven zeros after it. So, there we should have it. Now we're going to go to the optimizer and start. Now, this shouldn't take very long, and we can look at our graph here.
Okay, so the problem is there is one volt here that will be optimized, and then this is supposed to be 12 volts. Well, let's name them. VDS for voltage drain source. Capital V, little vs. Then we'll do that for both of them. And then this one will be VGS, voltage gate source. Okay. Now we go and optimize VGS. Set it from 2 to 7. Constrain and set this to 4.5 because that's exactly in the middle. Okay, so L4 needs to be changed. Not optimized. And this will be 1500. Make this 1500, not supposed to be optimized, and no need to constrain. So we forgot to not optimize C4, which is 282, C4, not optimize, and we'll set this capacitor, it's a bias capacitor, 1E7, and there we go. Now we can start. Now, as I talked about this earlier, this voltage drain source is supposed to be 12 volts. So 12, because that's how much the power supply supplies. And then we do start. Looks like there's a problem with our goals. Negative 34. Hold on. 20. 2, 1. There. It was trying to get two goals at the same time. Now, let's see if it will start to behave. There we go. Now it's working better. So it's going pretty fast. And I have seen this line get to the bottom. But it really starts to do that when we get to the other fetch. See this curve? It's really jumpy. So I'm going to stop it and then we'll work on the other fit. Now I'm going to name these. This one's going to be Boba Fet underscore Fet. Go. And now we will copy paste the whole thing and move it over here. We will delete this, clicking on it and hitting delete, delete this, and control dragging this. So, now we'll align these. Not necessary, but it makes it pretty.
and then, but yeah, and then we'll do control L, cap, then we'll put that there, wrong fit. Let's change this fit by deleting it, control L, and typing AFT, get the 4 watt one this time, okay? Then we'll move that right there, and put that right there. We'll ground this, put the grain source right there, and the gate right here. There. Now we'll change this one's name, crazy big. to boba fet underscore fet underscore capital J little case R. Okay, now we will uh, change all these names. This one's going to be C B one because it's capacitor bias T one. This is going to be CB1, I mean LB1, so LB1, because it's inductor, um, and then bias 1, and then this is going to be CN1, for matching, capacitor matching 1, and LM1 for inductor match one. And then increase the number from one to two on all of them. Now these are pies though. So this is a pi circuit. So we're going to align these so that it's easier to see the pi circuit. And we're also going to drag these up. Shift click any components that need to be in there. So now we will name this C little case PI one for capacitor pi one, C pi two, and then C pi three. Now that we have that, we can go to the independent variables, and you'll see that they're all properly checked, except for that one that I added, CPI2. You can double click right here if you want to see the names correctly, and then CPI2. These to be optimized, like that, and constrained from zero to one e seven. Okay, now we should be able to optimize. Start, and then go to the graph, window, tile, vertical. And this line should get to the bottom pretty quickly. If two FETs were really up here, So on Swimplex Optimizer, we found find this optimizer to be really useful. Show all iterations is off, it defaults to be on, and show all iterations is, um, it only shows you the best on the graph. And it le looks like it just did it. So now, just for fun, we're going to change this 20 to a 60. And then we're going to start it. And this should also go pretty fast. Stop at minimum air is stagnation. You want it to stagnate and not go forever if it can't do it. Stop on simulation airs you usually do not want because it, then it will stop the whole simulation if there's an error and that could be a problem. 
um, cancel current iteration on stop request is if you hit the stop button, it will cancel the iteration that it's doing. This is an iteration. It's doing iterations. Every one of these is an iteration. Um, and then log to file. I'm not sure what that is. So, looks like we're pretty close here. It'll get here pretty soon. It has gotten there before, but it's not going to get there. Well, it's probably going to get there if we wait longer, but um, it's really close. And it's really close to the bottom. When this line gets to the very bottom, that means it's done. It's really close. So let's stop it. Um, and here is a good way to do it. You can drag the goals, okay? So you don't want to do that. So you right click, add auto search marker, max, and then you click nearest to the line you want, and then you right click, add auto search marker, min, and then that gives you that. This, Um, now we have 59.99, it was really close. And then add auto search marker, max, and then put your cursor close to the other one. Add auto search marker, min. There. And then that is the minimum, that's the maximum. Minimum. Maximum. We got 61.12 D. We got 60 dB out of this thing, which is crazy. It's only meant, the big fet is only meant for 20 dB. And then, so yeah, it's a little crazy. So, thank you for watching, and please remember to subscribe, and bye.